Today, Tech at Work is not talking about a technology you shouldn't know, but it's looking to offer business leaders a comprehensive blueprint for using and scaling AI-powered intelligent automation. Now, automation has moved from the realm of manual labor to the world of intellectual work. Automation earlier was embraced to bring about efficiency, boost bottom line. But today, as we move towards intelligent automation, we're looking at business value creation, supporting the top line, the revenue. The Advantage Automation, The Automation Advantage is a new book which hits the stand and is authored by three of Accenture's top experts, Dr. Bhaskar Ghosh, Gayatri Palel, and Rajendra Prasad. And today I'm joined by one of them, Dr. Bhaskar Ghosh, the Chief Strategy Officer at Accenture. Uh, Mr. Ghosh, before we get to the book, first, if you could tell us, what is the difference between AI and intelligent automation? Because these words are often used interchangeably. Thank you, Rima, for inviting me in this uh, session. So it's a good question. So I will define in a very simple language. So for me, AI is all about a machine which is capable of sense, comprehend, act, and learn. But the, when I talk about the intelligent automation, it's a process or act which brings the multiple technologies like cloud, data, artificial intelligence, machine learning, to deliver the business value. The focus of intelligent automation is to drive data-driven decision-making, uh, uh, then uh, grow top line and create the, um, create the differentiated experience for the customer. So that is, that is the difference between the AI and intelligent automation. Okay, um, now let's talk you know, about this. Now you're a veteran, most companies have begun their automation journey and they want to do more. Can you lay out a blueprint for us on how business leaders can identify and prioritize their automation opportunities? I think uh, when you talk about the automation, historically, automation is all about the driving the cost, quality, productivity, and the scale. But the paradigm of automation is now shifted as we said, it is about the business value, better decision-making, user experience. So one need to think in that context. So how to choose the right automation? So I think that, you know, it's all about the business priority. One need to align the, create the automation strategy in line with their business priority. I have the different types of examples. Sometimes, you know, we were working in a bank where we found that their day-to-day -day operational challenge from their regular IT operation. So for them, the business challenge was to eliminate the human intervention, human process using more robotic process automation to streamline that and make that operation smooth. But whereas for another insurance company, they were struggling with growth. And once they switched to digital mode, and they found that large number of inquiries are coming how to prioritize. So then we have helped them to use the artificial intelligence to target the right customer and you know, the match the right product with the customer's demand to significantly improve the conversion rate. So it depends on the business strategy and the business requirement what one, where one should start. Okay, so align it with uh, the business strategy. Any barriers that you've commonly noticed when companies try and apply int intelligent automation? I think the biggest barrier, you know, there are a few things I will, I can call it out. The first of all is the talent. Because when you talk about the intelligent automation, it is not about the technology challenge. One need to understand the technology and the business priority. So you need a right talent to understand the industry as well as the business, business and the technology. That is number one. Then other point is that you know when you talk about this uh, intelligent automation implementation, it is more than just technology implementation. It's a big culture change for the organization. So. There are, there are, you will find a resistance, passive or active resistance from the people to embrace automation. Always the back of the mind, it will eliminate job, it will reduce the effort and so on and so forth. But so that's why that when you implement this um, uh, intelligent automation, one need to be sensitive to that and have the right chain management so that people understand value out of this intelligent automation. 
Yes, absolutely. But I think now increasingly there's so much awareness that automation is only going to bring out uh, the best productivity in a person rather than uh, result in a job loss. Um, you know, most leaders are faced with endless opportunities to automate some activity. So um, how do they derive the highest value out of the technology investments and automation efforts? I think that is the paradigm shift. Uh, I think that when we started thinking about this book, we are talking to the different clients and uh, of ours, and we realized that the clients are not talking about that, why they should automate, why they should accept the artificial intelligence or data. Everybody wants to do that. But the question is came up the how, how they should implement uh, this uh, new system, new automation across this organization. Now, Historically, the automation is about the cost saving, cost scale quality. So the value business value proposition was in lens of the cost saving. Now one need to think about in the future in the, you know, the business case for automation in terms of the revenue growth, in terms of the better decision making, you know, efficiency of the organization, better customer experience. So it's a very different paradigm, different lens in which one need to measure uh, how do you, you know, how do you choose? So we have given the different steps that one can, uh, how one can choose this uh, project or the areas to automate based business case. In this book, we have written that one should first start with a strategy and strategy should be aligned with the business strategy strategy should be simple, seamless, scaled, and it should be sustained. It's not a one-time infer. So we call this a 4S methodology for choosing the right priority. So the selection should be simple, seamless, scaled, and sustainable. Okay, that is the 4S methodology. I want to come back to that point where you said that employees are resistant. How can business leaders inspire their employees to embrace change and the new opportunities presented by automation, especially when you have to do so remotely? So that is a good question. I think they, it is about the communication and the chain management. See, fundamentally that when we talk about this intelligent automation, one need to understand we are empowering employees so that they can perform their work better. Say so salesperson who is conducting the customer sales, that person will be perform much better if he or she get empowered with the data and analytics related to the social media, related to the past experience, related to the product, and get the right match. So the question is that communication and change management from the top leadership is extremely important. So at the end of the day, every employee should see that how that is helping them into do their work better. I'll give you one example that one of the uh, hospital we are working with the doctors and where, you know, they do the kidney transplantation and uh, uh, that uh, uh, post uh, uh, surgical support. Now we have, uh, we have created the AI based virtual agent for them and loaded their last 10 years data. So when he loaded the 10 years data, so doctor who is treating the patient, they are powered with the last 10 years of experience of each and every patient. And their human decision is now empowered with that machine uh, capability. So they are performing much better. They are getting more confidence when they are taking the decision. So that is the power one should understand. And that communication is important. Then only people will embrace. If just if we just like that, if we try to implement and people think it will be just about the job losses, effort reduction, of course, that may some of the jobs will change. But that is not all. I just have one more point. I think that when you implement this way in this type of change, one need to have the right training methodology. So what we call as a reskilling and upskilling. So one is that there'll be certain job will change and eliminate. That is going to happen. So we need to understand that fact and reskill those people so that those people can be redeployed into the other world. That is the first aspect of it. Second aspect is there are some of the job will not change, but the people need to embrace the technology. So there we have to upskill people so that they can embrace the new technologies to be more productive. So the reskilling and upskilling program are very integral part of the intelligent automation implementation. 
Communication is absolutely the key. Um, you know, your book also gives a glimpse into the future where this journey of automation may take organizations. In what ways will this new generation of automation solutions make businesses and the lives of people better? Could you share some examples? I'll, I'll first, I'll share some example. Before that, I'll share some principle. So I think that we talked about the three things in our book. We talked about the relevance, resiliency, and responsibility. So when you talk about the relevance, that automation, what you implement, artificial intelligent powered automation, what you implement, that has to be relevant for the employees. If I work in different capacity, whether I'm an architect or an engineer or a banker, it has to help me to do my job. That's important. Second is the resilience. More and more artificial intelligence you work, your organizational dependency will be more on technology. So it has to be extremely resilient system so that so that it will not fail suddenly and whole organization will collapse. So one need to understand that switching into this automation and artificial based system has resilience in, in bent. The third component is the responsibility because you know, this lot of this uh, intelligent automation is driven by artificial intelligence and artificial intelligence is driven by the data. And it depends on that machine slowly learn based on your practice. And if your data is not good, data is biased, the machine will take the wrong decision and guide your organization in a different direction. So one need to make sure that you train the system and clean the data so that the artificial intelligence can really stay relevant and operates in an ethical way and drive the organizational change. I think, um, so that is, the, that is the overall guiding principle, but I feel is that um, organizations, enterprise leadership should drive this concept and should come with the AI first mindset. So once you come with the AI first mindset, you need to understand where you can apply artificial intelligence, how this technology can really you know, uh, change your business proposition, client experience, decision making, and create value for the enterprise and its stakeholders. And uh, any examples? So I'll give you the example in terms of, uh, you know, see, w one of the example I'll talk about one of the bank, you know, they have created the, they provide the loan to the um, small and medium business companies without any securities. And most of their customers are first time borrower. And this is bank is in China and they use the artificial intelligence uh, to assess, the, assess their customers. It takes three minutes to apply for the loan and it takes 30 seconds where the machine says they approve or disapprove. And it checks quickly with the 3000 parameters and based on that, the machine takes the decision. And what we see in that, that's one of the fastest growing digital bank in China and their NPA, which is non-performing asset rate is one third of their competitors. So this is an example how these companies are embracing this technology to create a significantly new business model to drive growth. Very interesting. And any two or three practical tips or advice to business leaders who are watching and listening to you? So I think that, you know, one need to start when you want to implement this automation and artificial intelligence led auto, uh, uh, technology, one need to be very clear that where to start. So organization do the proper assessment because until unless you know where do you stand, you will not be able to um, uh, create your strategy. Second is that you have to have your destination clear in the mind. That means your business, your automation strategy should be aligned with your business goal. You have to clearly articulate what business value you want to achieve with the investment in automation. And third thing is that when you implement this automation journey, make sure you take care of your people. Your people are your assets. So ultimately they have to use the technology. So you need to empower people with the training and skilling and reskilling so that at the end of the day, they embrace the technology to make you successful. 
Dr. Ghosh, thank you very much for your time as well as insights. Wish your book, uh, The Automation Advantage, a great success. Technology today can indeed reinvent companies, businesses, jumpstart innovation and enhance customer experience. But it's important companies have an AI first mindset. This book can provide a practical guide on how companies can proceed with their automation journey. Thank you, Mr. Ghosh, once again for joining us on CNBC TV 18.